Thank you, everybody, for being here today. And I'm going to just get right into it um, on scams, of course, in Nevada. Because according to the FTC, in 2022 alone, Nevada had the third highest rate of fraud and the fifth highest rate of identity theft. So every year, millions of Americans, of course, we know, including many of my constituents, fall victim to these predatory robocallers. They scammers, they create elaborate schemes through robocalls. They say they're calling from government agencies or other entities attempting really just to convince people uh, to provide their personal identifiable information or that they're legitimate. And so, for example, Nathan uh, is one of my constituents in Las Vegas. He's a veteran of the Air Force, of the U.S. Air Force. He wrote to my office sharing about a spam call he received from the Veterans Benefit Center. They asked him to refinance his mortgage. He said at one point he was receiving 10 to 15 calls a day from this Veterans Benefit Center. While thankfully Nathan recognized the scam, many others don't, and veterans like him who serve our country should not be targeted with these kinds of calls. It's unacceptable. We have to do more to protect uh, all of our constituents and combat these criminal schemes. So Ms. Saunders, what advice would you give to Nevadans and, of course, to everyone, uh, particularly in more vulnerable communities, perhaps, like seniors and veterans who are targeted by scammers and are impacted at, uh, I would say, disproportionate rates? We have, thank you for the question. We have one clear piece of advice to give all American subscribers until this problem has been solved. If you receive a call from anybody, unless you are absolutely positive you know, that you know the person that has called you, do not give access to your bank account or any other money to that caller. Um, if you receive a call from somebody purporting to be from the Veterans Administration and you want to make sure that your benefits are protected, then hang up, look up the number for the Veterans Administration who, or whoever it is that supposedly called you and called them directly. That, but don't give money, and we don't do that, even when we receive a solicitation from a charity that we believe in. We never, ever give over the phone payment information. Yeah, that's uh, great advice, and we're gonna have to keep putting it out there over and over again so people uh, continue to hear this message. Uh, but Mr. Berku, um, can you tell us a little bit about how companies are working together to ensure that people are aware of these scams? We have to get it out there again over and over to keep reminding people, scams like the ones that Nathan called us about. Um, what are you doing to make sure your advocacy is reaching every corner of every state, urban and rural? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the, the industry is very active educating their consumers and uh, their customers. I, I think they all have information out there. But one of the other things is the all voice service providers virtually today have protections in place too. They not only stir shaking, which we talked about, but all the major wireless carriers have blocking and labeling. So there's actually a lot of work to, to directly protect their, their customers as well. Thank you. And and speaking about customers, and now you're talking about your workforce who's uh, creating uh, all these um, uh, ways to protect consumers. Workforce and technology, it's so important. You know, as a former computer programmer, I have a unique understanding of both the benefits and challenges that technology presents. So in this case, we have this great technology, but it allows for more sophisticated use of robocalls or robotechs. And hopefully on the same side, we have presumably uh, enough uh, resources to combat that. So Ms. Brown, law enforcement officers, uh, they really need access to training and technology to uh, talk about the more advanced scams, especially as we see um, AI start to play a role in these scam robocalls. And so based on your experience, uh, what kind of technology and training do you think that Congress can support to bolster these resources as uh, these scams just get more and more um, vicious, I would say. Well, 
Thank you for the question, Senator. You know, I haven't given a lot of thought to <clears throat> specific training for state and local law enforcement, but it makes me think back to the importance of the Department of Justice and that collaborative work that the state attorneys general are already doing with the Federal Communications Commission and otherwise. So my perception is there are a lot of resources that are available, some of which are similar to what Ms. Saunders was talking about in terms of consumer facing, but I would mm -hmm. expect that the Department of Justice, the Federal Trade Commission, um, can can sort of um, dig into those resources and help state and local law enforcement. But I will say the state attorneys general have been very active on these issues, and I think they are uniquely positioned to help state and local law enforcement identify some of these more exotic, shall we say, um, scam attempts that uh, my panelists were discussing. So I think it's a great area to think about, particularly if you have constituents who it, it sounds like may not be getting that kind of um, information yeah. and support. Now, especially as we deal with deep fakes and, and other things. And of course, uh, we're just gonna keep working on building out our STEM workforce and keep working to protect the consumers. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for this hearing. I yield back.